Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I'm doing okay. Today, we are in Larksville, Pennsylvania. And we are gonna visit the grave of a woman who was trying to do good in her life and due to an accident, lost her life in a car in Chappaquiddick. And a man who someday hoped to be president saw his dreams gone from this. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. We're going to the grave of Mary Jo Kopechny. St. Vincent de Paul. Not a giant cemetery, but I also don't exactly know where I'm looking either, so. I know there's a headstone with her family name and then a smaller one in front with her name. So it's July 19th of 1969. The Mary Jo Kopechny's life would change. She was what they called a one of the boiler room girls. They had been supporters of Bobby Kennedy when he ran for president and had then, you know, after his assassination, went on to support Senator Edward Kennedy, Ted Kennedy from Massachusetts. And Mary Jo was one of those supporters. She went to a party on an island where they had rented a cabin. There were six of the boiler room girls and six men now, one of the girls actually spoke years later and said, despite what everybody believed, this was not just something where these girls were <laughs> there to sleep with these married guys. They were actually there to help the campaign, to do good. This just happened to be one of those nights where they were all unwinding. And so earlier in the day, Senator Edward Kennedy had shown up to the island. He was had a hotel in Edwardtown and showed up for the party for the afternoon and ended up going down to the beach. And when he went down to the beach, he had to take a path that he had to make a right on, which was a dirt path that took him over the bridge at Chappaquiddick. So later that night, that would be the bridge in question when Mary Jo Kopechny would end up losing her life. See, it wasn't until the next morning, around 10 a.m., that the police chief of Edwardton saw a car sticking, the rear end of a car, sticking up out of the water off the bridge. And he could see that there were two feet in there. Unfortunately, they happened to be Mary Jo's. The car that she was in was rented by Senator Edward Kennedy. Now, he had not reported that there was any accident, but then shortly after they found this and called out a diving team, he went in and confessed that he was in shock, that he was the driver and that he had tried to save Mary Jo and was unable to. He said he could remember going for the door or the window, but he couldn't recall how he got out. Crazy story. So he gave a brief statement to the police. The police called the FBI to decide whether, what kind of case this was. And they said, does it look like an accident? And they said, yes. They said, okay, then it's just a local law enforcement case. So they were able to retrieve Mary Jo and the police chief said the one thing that stuck out at him was that her clothes weren't ruffled. She didn't look like there was any foul play. They really didn't know, you know, if she'd been drinking, if there was, you know, they didn't know anything yet until Ted Kennedy came in and gave us this statement basically that he had made a wrong turn when they were leaving. They had left this party at 1115 without telling anyone. When they were going to catch the ferry, he took a wrong turn, which happened to be the same turn that he had taken earlier in the day. Instead of going left, he went right, went down this weird dirt path, and then lost control of the car and went off the bridge into the water. 
he tried to save her, but he said the current was too strong and he was unable to. So he ended up catching the ferry back and went to his room. Now, later on, they would find out that was not exactly true. After Ted Kennedy gave his statement, he basically went into seclusion for the next couple of days and he didn't come out until it was Mary Jo's funeral. And then he went back into seclusion, Hyannisport, and the police tried to get in touch with him, tried to talk to him. And no matter what they tried, they could not get anyone to talk to them. They could not get any of the witnesses that were at the party. They couldn't get Senator Kennedy. And then eventually through Senator Kennedy's lawyers, he struck up a plea bargain where he would be charged with the lesser of all offenses possible, which was leaving the scene of a crime with bodily injury. He would end up receiving two months suspended sentence and a year of probation and no criminal charges. After all of this, he decided to make a statement, make a television proclamation as to what happened, telling his story and that he still felt he was capable of leading the people of Massachusetts, except in his story on television, he made a second attempt that he never told the police about. He said that after he was unable to get Mary Jo and help Mary Jo, that he walked back a mile to the party, got two people there, two men to come help him. They tried to save her. They were unable to. They had a little meeting on the shore as to what to do and the men went home, Ted swam to the other side of the shore and went to his hotel room. Problem with that is there was all kinds of things that they found out later that didn't add up to this. For one thing, they found out that there were people in Ted Kennedy's hotel that had spoke to Ted Kennedy that morning, the morning before he went and confessed to the police what happened, they said he was acting normal, like nothing had happened. This was around nine o'clock and they said two men, they were the same two men that he said in his story had come to help save Mary Jo. Those two men took him into the hotel room for three minutes and when he came out, they said he was a completely different person. He left the hotel. Apparently he went and called his lawyer first, then called one of his aides and told him what happened, had him, he was only 10 minutes away, asked him to charter a flight and to come right away and to fly over Chappaquiddick to see the scene. And so the pilot attested that that did happen. He was the one that said it happened and he said it happened before 10 a.m. So that would have happened before Ted had went in and told his story to the police telling him what happened. So he had already started to set up a a defense before he'd even went in to tell them what had happened. They also said they left sometime before midnight. Ted thought 11.15 because he said that there was a clock inside the vehicle. When they retrieved the vehicle, there was no clock inside the vehicle. There was no way he could have known what time it was. And a local deputy had attested to seeing that same car with a man and a woman in it, matching their description at 12.30 or 12.45 and saw them basically making out in the car and was going to stop them. And when they saw him pull up, they sped off. So what the police basically thought was this, that we need to have an investigation. The examining doctor had requested a, an autopsy by the DA and they never did one. So we didn't know whether they had been drinking, whether there was any uh, sexual contact or anything like that. But in the end, the investigators, what they believed happened to Mary Jo is that they believed that she left with Senator Kennedy, who was married, because she had left behind her purse with her key to the hotel. They believe, and since they didn't tell anybody they were leaving, they believed that they were going off together to be intimate and Senator Kennedy was married. So they said by her leaving her key, it didn't seem like she was intending on coming back. So what they think happened was when that police officer came upon them and was gonna stop them, Senator Kennedy got very scared and he was the, in the driver's seat, they believe. He took off 
and they believe somewhere up the road he pulled over that he asked her to get into the driver's seat and that he was just going to go off on foot so that if she got pulled over again they wouldn't be able to tie him to this and that she probably was not familiar with that road he would have been familiar with the road he would have known the change in the the way the road was it was a uh, it turned into a dirt path at the point that they turned they believe that she was alone in that car because she should have sustained if she would have been the passenger much more injury than she did um, they believe that she was in the driver's seat and had tried to survive they found that she had moved to a pocket of the car where there was some air and she was there trying to survive. It's sad that someone who had such great intentions at such a tumultuous time in history, you know, Vietnam War, civil rights, everything that was going on, and one night of letting loose turned into her losing her life. And even when the pilot took done over the the crash, he said they could see the rear end of the car sticking up out of the water, and he said that Dunn said out loud, well, there goes Senator Kennedy's chances at the presidency. And Ted Kennedy never did become president. Never was charged with anything beyond this. We probably will never really know what the full story is. That sounds pretty logical to me. Sounds pretty logical to me that unfortunately, you know, when nobody would talk and nobody would give the police a statement, when they were able to put it all together with his story and everything, you know, another crazy thing is that when they decided to investigate this as possibly, you know, a murder, they had Ted Kennedy actually give his statement first before any of the other witnesses so he never had to explain or rebut any of the statements made by anyone else it was believed that because of where this happened and the kennedy name because he was such a top-ranking democrat and so many of the people involved in this from the da to the police chief, they have all said that they were Democrats and that they had to do their job, but it was almost reluctantly that they had to. So the Kopechny family lost their daughter. So sad. Lost their daughter when she was just trying to, uh, to make good. And Ted Kennedy, you know, I, I don't know why he decided to put himself at the crime scene if that wasn't the case, but... One of those mysteries we may never know the answer to. Rest in peace, Mary Jo. The bridge that this all happened is pretty much falling apart and almost in just a fossil state. That is definitely something that Ted Kennedy never lived down. His opposers for the rest of his life would shout out or remind him about Chappaquiddick every chance they got. Definitely remember that. Well, my friends, thank you all for watching. Have a great night and rest in peace. Mary Jo Kopechny. We will see you all next time. Goodbye.